new investors go out and they purchase an investment property straight away and they end up paying too much for the property and then it takes them years and years for the property just to catch up with the price that they've paid for it, let alone them get capital growth and start to move ahead in their investment property career. So how can we avoid paying too much for an investment property and how can we ensure that we pay just the right price or if possible under market value. Hey, I'm Ryan McLean from PositiveCashflowAustralia.com.au where I teach people like you how to find and invest in positive cash flow properties all over Australia. If you want access to my free ebook on the 12 hot places that you can find positive cash flow properties for sale, then head over to PositiveCashflowAustralia.com.au forward slash free or if you're on your mobile phone, it's PCA.im forward slash free and you can get access to it there. So how do we avoid paying too much for the investment properties that we're going to be purchasing? So I've just got some tips that I wanna to outline today and some steps that you can take to make sure that you're paying the right price. Tip number one is what's called the 110-3-1 rule. And I first learned this from real estate investor Dolph DeRuz, who's a very successful real estate investor. And he talks about looking at 100 properties, making offers on 10, and of those offers, maybe three will be accepted, and you would then go ahead and purchase one property. So rather than doing what most investors do and simply going out and looking at two or three properties, making an offer on one and buying that one, Dolph DeRue suggests that we look at a myriad of properties up to 100 or more if possible. The reason this works and the reason this helps us paying more for a property is that we really begin to understand what a market's like when we're looking at hundreds of properties in that market. What happens is we often get very emotional when we're looking to buy investment property. And if we're entering a new market that we're not 100% familiar with and we see a property um, and we talk to the real estate agent, we think in our own minds, oh my goodness, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I need to jump on this. The real estate agent has already told me that there's offers on it. I need to go ahead and make an offer and bam, I'm competing with someone else and I'm paying too much for the property. Because we haven't done our research and because we haven't looked at lots of properties, we've actually purchased a property overpriced. So follow this 100 10, 3, 1 rule, and don't be afraid to make offers on properties that are below the asking price, which is called a low ball offer. It'll give you a feel for the market, and it's not necessarily gonna get accepted, but it'll give you a good idea of what the market is doing. Tip number two is to use checklists and processes. This is something that I learned from another podcast, which is the Australian, what is it? Everyday Property Investor Podcast. So you can find them at everydaypropertyinvesting.com. And basically, they talked about having checklists when you're going to inspect a property. And what that means is you have a checklist of everything that you need to look at before you go ahead and purchase your investment property. Some things that you might want to consider are you know, how many rooms, what's the rental yield of the property, all of these sorts of things. You might want to have a building and a pest inspection in there as well. You might want to have a third party valuation of the property done by yourself as well. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can use in your checklist. But by having a checklist and by having a process, it helps us and it helps us avoid becoming emotionally attached to a property and make sure that we do our figures and we do the correct inspections before we go ahead and purchase. I put some checklists up for you guys in my uh, website, which is positivecashflowtools.com. It's a very cheap subscription site, gives you access to a whole bunch of calculators, checklists, and other tools over there. So again, that's positivecashflowtools.com. So checklists and processes are a great thing to have to help you pay, just help stop you pay too much for an investment property. Number three is getting comparable sales data. So this means going out and looking at other properties in the area that have sold that are similar to the property that you're looking at. You can get these through very professional reports. The best way that I find to get these sorts of reports is actually through a subscription to Real Estate Investor, which you can check out by going to pca.im forward slash free webinar. 
and you'll then have a free webinar and it'll show you through the tool. But that allows you to get reports on comparable sales for any property you want to look at. So you're not paying for the report for one property of $20 or $50 or whatever it may be, but you're actually getting access to an online tool and you then you can go through and check as many property reports as you want. So by going through and by getting comparable sales data as to what else has sold in the area, then I find that's a great way to understand whether the property is actually at market value or whether it's overpriced. Tip number four is to find out previous sales history. In my training tutorial videos over at positivecashflowacademy.com, I specifically chose one investment property and we went through and we looked at whether it's worth what they were asking for it. And this was a cheap property. They were only asking about $120,000. And what we did was we looked at previous sales history for that property and we saw that 18 months ago, that property had actually been sold for around $97,000. And we also looked at the growth for the area and saw that growth in the area had been stagnant and not really grown at all in the last 18 months. So how could a property go from $97,000 to $120,000 if the market hasn't grown at all and nothing's been done to the property? So understanding what the property sold for in the past can help you to work out what it's worth today. You can use a free tool called onthehouse.com.au to find out previous sales history. Tip number five is to find out how long the property's been on the market for. I find this great in negotiations and great in managing your emotions as well. If you're in a hot market that's moving really quickly, like I've heard of properties in Sydney that are sold within the week, well then you're gonna have to act fast and the idea is to know your market before you even look at a property. But if you're just entering into a market and you found a property that you like, well before you go ahead and make an offer, find out how long the property has been on the market for. And you can use a free tool, I like to use Ripe House, which you can find at pca.im forward slash ripe, R-I-P-E. They've got a three a free three day trial to that, but then after that it is a paid tool. But that will show you how long a property has been on the market for and whether the property has been discounted by the real estate agents because it's been on there for so long and hasn't sold. I find this really good because it helps you manage your emotions. If a property has been on the market for 100 days or more than 100 days, well, slow down, take your time and work out whether or not this is actually worth what they're asking for because if it was, it probably would have sold and why hasn't it? So that's a great tool and you can also use that in your negotiations as well. So that website is pca.im forward slash ripe. R-I-P-E, you can check that out. Tip number six is to get your building and pest inspections done. Very few investors actually take the time, put the effort in and actually pay the money to get a building and a pest inspection done before they purchase a property. A building inspection is where a builder comes and analyzes the property and looks for any structural issues or any other issues that you may have with the property itself. So if you're looking at a property and it has structural issues, then this will come out in the building inspection and you can ensure that you're not paying a premium price for a house where you're gonna to have to do a whole bunch of renovations just to bring it up to speed anyway. And a pest inspection is the same thing, they'll check for termite damage and damage of other pests. So you can ensure that you're not paying premium price for a house that has pest damage that you're gonna to have to pay to repair. And tip number seven is to try not to make emotional decisions. And it's easier said than done. Um, when we're buying a house, I think emotions do come into play a lot because it's the house that we wanna live in. We need to think about how it works for us and our family. But when we're purchasing an investment property, we do need to be wary of our emotions because sometimes we might buy a property that we love and we think the curtains are great and we love everything about it, but it's not a great financial investment. So we always need to do the figures on our property. So I do suggest doing a cash flow analysis, making sure that the property is going to deliver the return on investment that you desire rather than just buying it because you like it and you think it's a good investment even though you haven't done the sums. And again, if you want help doing the sums, just head over to positivecashflowtools.com. As I said, very cheap subscription site where you can get access to a whole bunch of calculators and tools that will help you as a property investor. So there you have seven ways that you can avoid 
paying too much for an investment property. Obviously, when you're buying a first investment property, you don't want to start out on the wrong foot. You want to start by investing in a solid property that has solid growth potential. And if you're paying too much for a property, well, then you're actually going to have to wait for the market to catch up to you. And you don't want to be in that position. You want to be if possible, buying below value so you've got instant equity so you can then go ahead and grow your portfolio. If you want more videos, articles and podcasts like this one, head over to positivecashflowaustralia.com.au or pca.im if you're on your mobile phone and you don't want to type in the really long one. And until tomorrow, which is when the next episode comes out, stay positive. And if you hung around this long, I just want to let you know that I am now starting to interview some people for the podcast. Obviously, my experience and my knowledge only goes so far, so I'm really excited to invest. I'm actually investing a couple of different mortgage brokers to talk about financing and loans and all of that sort of stuff. And in the future, I'm looking at doing more interviews with people in the industry, maybe real estate agents, maybe conveyances or solicitors and just get their advice and their help answering your questions.